So let's talk about how to find zeros of a polynomial if you knew there's at least one rational zero and you are not able to factor. So we can use all the things we've studied so far, like our remainder theorem, factor theorem, and that will help us. So let's take an example. Here's our function h of x, 3x cubed plus 10x squared plus 10x plus 7. So now that you have this polynomial and we're not able to factor, and you are told that it has at least one rational zero. How should we start? The first step would be to find possible rational zeros. So here the possible numerators are factors of seven, so one or seven. Denominator will be factors of the leading coefficient, which is three, so one or three. So our rational zeros are plus or minus one, plus or minus one third, plus or minus seven, and plus or minus seven thirds. Now that you know these are possibilities. How do we know which one works? So we have to try each one, do long division, and see which one gives us remainder 0. In order to do long division, what are we going to long divide by? So for example, if x equals 1 is a 0, then we would divide our polynomial function by x minus the 0. So in this case, it will be x minus 1. If one doesn't work, then we will try, say, one-third, and maybe seven-thirds. So every time you want to do long division, you're just going to have to do that. So let's do one of the long divisions and see what happens. So how do we know that you divide by x minus whatever? So if x equals seven is a zero that works, that means that x minus seven is going to be a factor. We saw that because if you have a factor, that means the remainder is going to be 0. And so that means factor is x minus that number, in this case, the 7. All right, let's do long division. So here's x minus 7. We're long dividing it into 3x cubed plus 10x squared plus 10x plus 7. I've written it like that so that each of the terms have their own components so you can see what is going on. So x times what will give us 3x cubed? What do you think? Yes, what do you think? So that would be what? 3 and then what? x to the power, good, 2. Then you take 3x cubed, uh, 3x squared times x, and 3x squared times negative 7, and put the answers here. So this would be 3x to the third power. Under here, 3x squared times negative 7. So that will give us negative 21x squared. All right, now you're going to subtract. So 3x cubed minus 3x cubed. Don't forget that the minus sign belongs to all of it. So when you subtract, 3x cubed minus 3x cubed will be gone. 10x squared minus minus 21x squared. So that will give me 31x squared. And so we have so that 31x squared. So now we want. So 31x squared, so now we want to know x times what will give me 31x squared. So that will be what? Go ahead, think about it. Good, plus 31x multiplied out. You can already see that these are all positive numbers, and they're not going to give you a 0. But let's just complete it so we can see what happens. So we're going to have, again, you want to subtract. So you're going to end up with 31x squared. And then you're going to end up with negative 217x. When you do the subtraction, you will get, so now you will need plus 227, which will give you, so again, you're subtracting. Again, you're subtracting, so this will, 227x minus 227x will be gone. And so now you will just have 7 plus 1589. So our remainder here will be 1, 5, 9, 6. So you can see in this particular case, we are not going to get a 0. You, in fact, got 1596 as your remainder. If you have to do this long division for each of the zeros that we have here, which is 1, negative 1, 1 third, negative 1 third, 7, negative 7, positive 7 thirds, and negative 7 thirds. It's going to take you forever. So there is an easier division method called synthetic division. Whatever you are dividing by, the root. 
So in this case, x equals 7. You, you put the 7 here. And if you notice, 3, 10, 10, 7, those are the coefficients of the original polynomial as placeholders. Because when you actually put this answer here, these terms, the first term, 3x cubed, 3x cubed, disappear. And it's really this term that is contributing to your division. So in order to do that division, since you have a 1x, 1x times 3x squared, one less power of x, but the coefficient remains the same. So that's why the first step is to drop this 3 down as is. So you put the 3 there. And then you take the 7 and the 3, multiply, and put the result there. So 7 times 3 would be 21. And 21 and 10 add together will give you 31. 7 times 31. So again, you will get 217. And then add together, which will give you 227. 7 times 227, which will give you 1589. And then adding together will give you the remainder, which is 1, 5, 9, 6. So the way you read that would be that the quotient is 3x squared plus 31x plus 227. And then this number here is the remainder. So the last number gives you remainder, then constant term, x term, x squared term. And you just, if you had more terms, you would just keep increasing the power of x. So the important thing to watch out here is something called Descartes' rule of signs. If your polynomial has all positive coefficients, you know that none of the positive rational zeros are going to be your solutions. So you could save some time in testing those. Descartes' rule of sign gives you an idea of the number of positive and negative roots. The number of positive roots equals to the number of sign changes between consecutive non-zero coefficients of p of x. Or it's smaller than that by an even number. So a zero of multiplicity 2 or more is counted separately. What does that mean? That means that if I have all positive coefficients of x, there are no sign changes, which means I have zero positive roots. So I can save myself a whole bunch of time and just start checking negative rational zeros. If you look at p of negative x, the number of sign changes there is going to give you the number of negative roots, or it will be an even number less than that. And again, 0 of multiplicity, 2 or more is counted separately. So what does that mean? That means if you look. If you replace all x's with negative x's, which means all odd powers will change their signs, even power will keep their signs. And you look at all the sign changes, it will give you some idea of what negative zeros the polynomial could have. So let's come back to our original example. So let's take a look and see which of these potential rational zeros actually work. You can see that from Descartes' rule of signs, since there is no sign change, there are no positive real roots to this polynomial. So none of the positive rational zeros are going to work. So we can start with negative 1. And you can see here, we have the negative 1 is one of the roots that we want to try and see if it works. 3, 10, 10, 7, highest degree to lowest degree. Write down all the coefficients. If there are any missing terms, you would put 0 as placeholders for that term. In this case, we have all of the terms. So now all we have to do is synthetic division. So let's see. You can pause the video here and do synthetic division on your own and come and check your answers. Or let's do the first one together in case you don't remember how to do synthetic division. So bring the coefficient 3 down as is. So this 3 here will come and sit here. Then you want to go here and figure out how to multiply negative 1 and 3. So negative 1, which is right here, times 3 will give you, what, negative 3. So enter that there. And then up and down, you add. So 10 minus 3, which will give you 7. Then negative 1 times 7. Put the answer here. So that will give you negative 7. Add 10 and negative 7, and that will give you 3. 
negative 1 times 3, which will give you negative 3, good. And then 7 minus 3, which will give you a 4. And so our and so 4 is going to be our remainder. And 3x squared plus 7x plus 3 is our quadratic. Since your remainder is not 0, you know negative 1 is not going to be one of your roots. All right, so negative 1 is crossed out. So now we have to move on to negative 1 third. So do the same thing, but with negative 1 third. So pause the video here, fill in all the blanks, and then come back and check your answers. So assuming you've come back from pausing the video, you probably got something like that. So 3 came down, negative 1 third times 3 is negative 1. Add those two gives you 9, negative 1 third times 9 is negative 3. Add them together, 7, negative 1 third times 7 is negative 7 thirds. Uh, 7 plus negative 7 thirds is not going to give you 0, so you know that's not going to work. So let's try negative 7 thirds, because I can already see that if I put negative 7 here, and 3 comes down, negative 7 times 3, negative 21, plus 10, negative 11, times negative 7 is 77, so it's just way out of the question. So let's try negative 7 thirds. And so negative 7 thirds times 3, which will give you negative 7. 10 minus 7 is 3. And 3 times negative 7 thirds, another negative 7. Add them gives you 3. And then another negative 7 plus 7 will give you 0. So yay, this is our 0, which means that negative 7 thirds is our 0. So we have found 1, 0, and so that means our and so that means our quotient is 3x squared plus 3x plus 3. We can factor out a 3. So we have x squared plus x plus 1. That's our quotient. And so now for the third step, we're going to have to set this to 0 and solve for x. So that would mean that you really are just looking at x squared plus x plus 1, setting that equal to 0. And our remainder is 0, which is how we know that negative 7 thirds is one of our rational roots. All right, let's take a look at step 3 then. Step 3 is now finding the roots for x squared plus x plus 1 equals 0. And that would be a quadratic formula. So please pause the video here. And then we will check and see if you have the same answer as what I got. All right, let's see if you got the same answer as me after you did the quadratic formula. So minus b plus or minus b squared minus 4ac over 2a. And so square root negative 3 will give you square root 3i. So you can see our remaining two roots are non-real complex roots. Whenever you have a root like that, always write it in the standard form for complex numbers. So real part plus imaginary part. So separate it out and reduce if possible. So now we have all our solutions. And so finally, we'll write your answer as h of x has the zeros, negative 7 thirds, which we got from doing the synthetic division, and then the negative half plus 1 half square root 3i, negative 1 half minus 1 half square root 3i. Those are all the three zeros of this cubic polynomial. All right, go ahead. You do the whole problem on your own. Find all potential rational zeros, then do synthetic division, and then find all the roots. Go ahead. You can do this. All right, so here we have our numerator is going to be all factors of 10. So 1, 2, 5, and 10. Denominator is all factors of 3, so that's 1 and 3. So we have 1 over 1, 1 third, 2, 2 thirds, 5, 5 thirds, 10, and 10 thirds. Those are all our plus or minus options for potential rational zeros. So let's take a look and see if negative 2 works. You can see doing synthetic division that I got remainder 84. Hopefully you got that also. Didn't work. 2 worked. So when you do enough, you'll get a sense of which numbers to try first. So I have 2. When I did synthetic division with 2, it worked. And so the quotient here, how do you read that? Negative 5 is a constant term. 12x 
8x squared, 3x cubed. So that's our quotient. So now use the reduced polynomial of degree 3 to find the remaining zeros, which makes your life a little easier. So I'm going to try one third because I tried and that worked. So I want to show you what happened. When you do one third, it worked. And now the remaining polynomial is a quadratic polynomial. So you can now find the remaining zeros by doing quadratic formula. Go ahead, you try the rest and see what you get. So x equals 1 third worked, and this was our quotient. If you factor the 3 out, you have a quadratic equation, which will give you the remaining two solutions, which will be negative 3 halves plus or minus square root 11 halves i. So our solutions for the fourth degree polynomial are 1 third, 2, and then the two complex roots. We could also write the polynomial in factored form. So another advantage of finding all the zeros are we can write it as product of factors, linear factors, take a look. So we can write our original polynomial, since we found all the zeros, 3x to the fourth plus 2x cubed minus 4x squared minus 29x plus 10 as factors. Our leading coefficient is 3, so 3 times x minus 1 third, x minus 2, x minus negative 3 halves plus square root 11 halves i, and x minus negative 3 halves minus square root 11 halves i. And so if you simplify a little bit, here is your polynomial all in factored form. So you can see the power of what we've done is it allows us to solve higher degree polynomials. So what we've just done is summarize all the techniques that you've used in this section. You used finding rational zeros, then actually doing division to find all the zeros, and you can even use the zeros to write the polynomial in factored form.